In the Christian France in 586 AD, a conference was held to discuss whether the woman is a human with a soul or not. And if she has a soul, is it of a human or animal nature? And is her soul equal to the soul of the man or not? At the end, they agreed that she has a soul, but it is inferior because it is only created to serve the desires of the man. The evil, coward, and corrupt spirits of men are the ones from which women were created. Before Islam, the Romans and Arabs used to bury their young daughters because they didn't want to have female offspring. For them, they cause disgrace and they are not useful when they grow older. They would simply put them in a hole and throw dust over them. In our civilized world, there are 127 countries located in the Caribbean, West Africa, and Latin America, which export the commodity of women. They deal in women trafficking to Western European countries and North America, where women are exploited in the most brutal way, such as hard labor and prostitution. Before Islam, the whole world dealt with women as inferior creatures. Even in religions, she does not have a dignity or humanity. For instance, in India, the wife was like a slave in her husband's house. He could lose her in a gambling or give her as a gift to his friends. If her husband dies, she cannot marry anyone else. In many cases, they burn her alive. Also, in China, the husband can bury his wife alive if she disobeys him. If he dies, his family inherits her and they own her like a property. The existence of the woman is the main reason and source of crisis and destruction in the world. The woman is like a poisonous tree. Her appearance is beautiful, but when birds eat from it, they die immediately. The male priests judged women and controlled them. When they wish, they get rid of her. Do not talk to me about her rights. We want from her to be just like what we want. We want her to fulfill our commands. We own her. She is our slave. The woman accused by her husband of adultery is sentenced to death. Even if he does not have proof, the woman in Christianity and Judaism is the reason for all plights. She is the one who seduced Adam to commit the original sin. It is mentioned in the Bible. The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. According to Christianity, God punished Adam and the entire humanity because of Eve. But in Islam, both Adam and Eve equally made the mistake. They are both responsible. Almighty Allah says in the Quran, but Satan whispered to both of them. Before Islam, the status of women was like that of animals or even worse, to be burnt after the death of the husband, to be buried alive, a slave from birth to death. For example, the testimony of women was not accepted at any court regarding any matter, even when it comes to her most private affairs, like her honor. In the Jewish belief, if the man accuses his wife of adultery, or if he accuses her of not being a virgin when he married her, her testimony is not taken into account. She faces a trial only according to the testimony of the man. If her family could not prove her innocence, or even if she really is innocent, then she would be found guilty by the court and she would be executed. In Islam, if a man accuses his wife of adultery, he takes oath five times that he's truthful. And if the woman takes an oath five times that she is truthful and innocent, then she would be considered innocent. And if a stranger man accuses a woman of adultery, then he could not prove it or bring witnesses to confirm his allegation, then he should be punished with 80 lashes. I know it is a harsh punishment, but keeping the dignity and honor of Muslim women is more important. It is a serious matter. The woman was not created for science, wisdom, thinking, art, or politics. In Islam, education is obligated in both men and women. There was a woman in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. She went to the Prophet Muhammad to discuss with him a religious matter. 
until a Quranic verse was revealed specially for this occasion to explain this matter. The Quranic chapter which contains the verses about this matter is called Surah Al-Mujadala. It means the bleeding. Because a woman kept pleading to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him to have a ruling, so Allah sent down clear verses for this specific situation. As for the Bible, we will find verses that ban women from opening their mouths to talk in the churches. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. The women in the menstrual period causes bad omen, death, and destruction. She makes everything around her unclean. In May 2013, some women protested against the old Hindu tradition of detaining women in barns during their menstrual cycle to avoid impurity. More than 24 women die each year because of the cold weather and diseases they face during the time of detention. In Hinduism, Judaism, and Christianity, a woman passes through periods of impurity so she becomes cursed. Even her husband becomes impure because of her in everything she touches. In Islam, there is no such nonsense. The Prophet's wife mentioned that he used to ask her where she ate, to eat from the same spot. In Islam, there is no place for superstitions of impurity and cursing. According to the Bible, the man can take a vow and fulfill it any time, while the woman has to ask her father or her husband to be able to take a vow. In Islam, it is a normal thing if a man or a woman takes a vow in a public or private and they can fulfill the vow as they want. If any of them could not keep their vows, both of them have to give the same expiation which is feeding 10 poor people. It is clear and equal rulings for both of them. From a woman, sin had its beginning, and because of her, we all die. Adultery, it's a sin in all religions but it has different definitions in each of them. In the Quran, a man and a woman having a sexual relation outside the frame of marriage are both adulterous. The punishment is the same for both of them. End of the story. While in the Holy Scripture, the relationship is only considered adultery in the case the woman was married. In that case, the children are considered bastards and homeless. As for the man, if he is married and had a relationship with a woman, he is not considered adulterous and his children are legitimate. Why is that? Because in Judaism, the married, the married woman is owned by her husband. So when a man commits adultery with another married woman, he violates the property of another man. So he has to be punished. But if he was married and slept with an, an, an unmarried woman, then he is not violating the property of anyone. These were such double standards and an insult to the dignity of a woman. Marriage and family are important in all religions. In Islam, in a very short and eloquent description, Allah says in the Quran, and of his signs is that he created you from yourselves, mates that you may find tranquility in them and he placed between you affection and mercy. Indeed, and that are signs for all people who give thoughts. This is marriage in Islam. But what about Judaism and Christianity? It is like ownership contract. The Talmud says, the household articles, even the crumbs of bread on the table, were his. Should she invite a guest to her house and feed him, she would be stealing from her husband. This is why even the richest woman becomes penniless the moment she marries. Even her decisions and character are owned by her husband. She cannot do anything except after his approval. She cannot even go to the court if he oppresses her. What you might not believe is that the woman used to pay a dowry for the man to marry her. She would take from the money of her father to pay him. This is why men didn't wish to have daughters. In Islam, it is quite the opposite. The man has to pay a dowry for the woman. She alone can specify the amount of the dowry she wants. 
after marriage, each of them is independent in terms of the financial matters and wealth. In the Bible, the woman can never inherit for a simple reason, because she is part of the inheritance. If she is a wife or a mother, if she is the daughter, she can inherit in case she does not have brothers. If she has brothers, then she cannot inherit at all, and the brothers should not give her any of their inheritance. In Islam, in some cases, a woman may inherit more than the man, and sometimes exactly like him, and other times have what he inherits according to the family connection to the deceased. In the final ruling, it might seem unfair to some time that she inherits half of what the man inherits, but it is not unfair after we know that in Islam, the woman should be supported by the man her entire life, and he carries the, the whole responsibility of providing for her. Even now, in our modern times, the neo-priests do whatever they want to the woman. They control her and judge her. She is a commodity, a tool, a means. We decide for her what she should do. Only we can do that. When the Catholic Bible says directly that the birth of a daughter is a loss, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him says, whoever has three daughters and is patient toward them and feeds them, gives them to drink and clothes them from his wills, they will be a shield for him from the fire of the day of resurrection. When the Talmud says a woman cannot own anything and everything is owned by her husband, the household articles, even the crumbs of bread on the table were his, should she invite a guest to her house and feed him? she would be stealing from her husband. The Quran says, and due to the wives is similar to what is expected of them according to what is reasonable. It also says, it is not lawful for you to inherit women by compulsion. And it says, for women is a share of what they have earned. When the Bible says, from a woman, sin had its beginning, and because of her we will die. The Quran says, seek no means against them. And it says, and live with them in kindness. Many Westerners believe that Islam is a religion that restricts women. A surprising number of women are converting to Islam, especially in America and Europe. Women represent more than 70% of the converts to Islam. The question is what the reasons are for the modern American and European women to convert to Islam. There are personal reasons linked to women themselves who are not satisfied with the religion that they have been raised in. So, they started to read into religions until they found Islam, and they felt drawn to Islam because of what they described as its logic, especially with regard to its philosophy toward women. Many of them expressed their attraction to women's rights, provided by Islam after they correct the negative stereotypes which they previously had, and which often associate Muslim women with oppression violence and submission to men.